Hey guys, welcome to the studio, welcome to another vlog. I'm all done with music production for today, four hours straight working on the album. Now I don't feel like making music anymore. I feel like listening to music and practicing a lot of my DJ skills. Some have been asking me about melodic mixing, so today's video will be all about melodic mixing. What it actually is, when to use it, how it works, and when actually not to use it. So first up, of course, what is actually melodic mixing? It's pretty straightforward if you know anything about music. You know that every single track on this planet has a key, as long as it's not like, totally experimental. Every EDM, hip hop or pop song has one key. The key also never changes. Maybe in the bridge it changes to the parallel key, but this is really not important for DJing. So to a melodic mix you need to know the, the key of the songs. If you don't know what keys are, it's like... Hmm. How do you explain that? It's actually so, so common sense for me. Let's put it this way. If two songs that are not in the same key are played together, mixed together, and one song is playing a guitar, chords, or a bass, and the other as well, meaning they have melodic elements in there, it will clash. It will sound horrible. It will just, it, it's not good. Like, everyone will notice it, and you should avoid it by all costs. Back in the days of vinyl, there was not really a way to, to know the key just by looking at a media player, CD player, that is actually analyzing it for you. You could either try and figure it out yourself and write it on the records, but basically no one did that. DJing back then was really different for pop music. It was just fading from one song to another. For hip hop, it was scratching from one to another. And for techno and house, it was using the intros and outros that are usually, back then at least, only drums. So there was no flashing even really possible. It was good enough to be played live in a club. Nowadays, mixing has transformed a lot. Songs are shorter, way, way, way shorter. And especially in EDM, EDM big room and all these kind of festival styles, the mixing is a lot faster. You don't wait for the intro and outro. It's basically not mixing anymore. It's live mash upping, which definitely needs a bit more training and a lot more preparation. Actually, most of these DJs have their playlists already set up for the evening and can sort their songs by keys. There is software available that will detect your songs for the key. There's, for example, by Pioneer Record Box or for Denon, there's a special software. You load your tracks in there. It's basically like iTunes. You can do playlists and it will analyze the BPM and the key. And these Denons, that's what I love the most about them, they can actually do this on the fly. So you don't need to use a computer, don't need to use software, you just plug in your USB stick, wait a couple of seconds and it will show it to you on the display. And there are basically two methods how you can do it. The classic one would be just like by keys with the circle of fifths, which looks like this. And then there is the Camelot wheel that uses colors and simple numbers. That one looks like this. It's like more for the not musical trained DJ. At the end, both of them are basically the same. I personally would just learn the proper one because if you ever get into music production, you will need to learn it anyways. And learning both is, is like the same, really. It's just the same. So with these players, you can go to the preferences by long pressing this one right here. And then let's see, is it in utility? No, it's in preferences. You can also select like the default speed range. If it sings bars or beats, the Q loop quantization, default loop size. And then we got here for library, sharps, flats, open key or Camelot. So let's change it really quick to Camelot and go back and maybe load in a song. So you can see here underneath of the note, it shows you 11A, 12B, 1B, 2A, and this really corresponds with the Camelot wheel. Back to the settings, let's change it back to flats. And now you see underneath of the note, it shows you F major, D minor, C minor, 
So all of the keys of all of the songs. So far pretty easy, straightforward. You do this for both players, choose one method and you then match those keys as you would BPM. BPMs is easy, you just pick the same BPM with keys. You can pick the same, which is the easiest by far, but then the entire night the keys would actually never change and you could only select a few songs. You can also use keys that are right next to it in the wheel or on the opposite side, parallel keys. So for example, for C major, A minor is the parallel key, that's a match. So again, if you're in C, which means C major, you can match it with A minor because it's parallel, it's the opposite side. And you can choose the two ones that are next to it. In this case, F and G major. Another example would be actually A minor. For A minor, you can of course switch back to C or use the two ones that are right next to it. So for every key, you got exactly four options, the parallel key, the two ones right next to it, and they will match almost 100%. So basically when you start DJing that night, you start in one key, then you switch to a parallel key or to one that is right next to it. And then again, use that as the base to switch again to your four options. I think that's pretty clear. You can either learn this by heart, both of these circles or one of them, or you can just print it somewhere really small, have it on your phone. That's also how I have it set up if I ever need it. The next big question is then actually, what does it sound like? Let's maybe compare a mixed song that is mixed in key with another and use an example where it just doesn't fit. For this example, I of course have to, to use my own songs because otherwise it will get blocked on YouTube. So let's do it. So we got right here, A minor, 123 beats per minute and it's cued to the very first chord of the song. And on the other side, another song, Dancing With Our Hearts, also A minor, 123 beats per minute. I didn't change anything about this song. It's at zero for the pitch and here it's at plus 2.5 to get it up to speed. I've selected this little button right here with the note on it. This makes sure no matter how much I speed up the track or down that it actually keeps the pitch, it keeps the key. I'm sure you're all familiar with um, like pitching up and down a song. It makes it sound like Mickey Mouse or pitches it really down low. Let's, let's test that really quick. And by having this one button on, it will make sure that the tone, the key, the pitch is staying the same no matter how much you speed it up and down. And that's also like one of the ways to actually change the key of a song. If you speed it up or down, it will show you in the display how the key is actually changing. The downside, of course, it being like transformed. So if you play a huge pop song that everyone knows and everyone wants to sing along and you do this, people will notice if it's like, more than one or two BPMs up or down, even like the slightest change, they might even notice. So I always have that button on that locks the pitch and select the right song. So if you play more underground music or music that no one in that club actually really knows, and if there are no vocals in it, then feel free to just pitch it up and down to match the key to play the perfect track that you intend and still keep it in key. But yeah, let's actually play both of them together. Let me set this one back to 123. So both of them, A minor, play together the first loop of the song. The first one all about is just like the kick and chords. And the second one already has at the beginning 
the vocal. And if you play both together, it actually works. Now let's change one of them. You can hear every time the, the chords hit both of these songs the chords hit there are like too many notes together playing that just don't belong together it sounds like hitting your hat right on the piano it's just not good so if you want to mix melodic parts of a song with another song that also has melodic parts going on be it a vocal a bass percussions might even be in key then you also got, of course, guitars and like every single instrument. This way, with the melodic mixing method, you can make the match, make them sound good. And this way you don't have to rely on the song having an intro and outro. There are, of course, still cases where even melodic mixing won't help you. It's not like saving you from everything. Because if you have like the drop of one song playing and it's like a full pop drop with like strings, voice and guitar and chords in it, and you mix it with the same piece of energy in another song, and even if they have the same key and BPM, it will still sound bad. It might be in key, it might be melodically correct, but there will be just too much stuff going on, too many rhythms playing at the same time. So yes, use it whenever you need to. Don't always use it. If you mix techno, you probably won't use it because the intros and outros are made for DJs and usually they don't have any melodic things in it. For creating mashups, this can be a nice tool. You can like choose another layer here, basically have a third Pioneer Prime player and on this one have maybe vocals that you put in key of one of the two songs and mix it in and this way live create your mashups, edits whatever you kind of feel like. I hope this helps. I hope this was interesting. I hope you now understand what melodic mixing actually is, when to use it, when not to use it. If you're interested in any other DJ kind of bass tutorial, I've created an entire playlist with all, all of my DJ tutorial videos. I will link it up at the end and also up there. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Let me know what you want to see next. I've covered already quite a lot, but maybe there's something I haven't talked about yet. And for me, it's not time to just switch the place to right here, right in between of my two big bad boy friends and just make music because that's even more fun than DJing, like making an entire song from scratch. If you're interested in that, this entire channel is like capturing my life as a DJ and producer on a daily basis in a vlog, sharing everything, business stuff, tutorials, just whatever happens that day. Today, I felt like mixing a little. Thanks a lot for watching. See you tomorrow again. Sign out. <laughs>